Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. Behind me is a 2001 Kia Sportage and it's actually got a P0422 code, which is main catalyst efficiency below threshold, which basically means that the catalytic converter is not working properly. And I took a look at things and it's it looks to me like the catalytic converter is working normally. So I kind of proceeded to look into it further and I discovered some cracks in the exhaust manifold. And that's what I believe the problem is. And uh, I actually kind of proceeded to, to kind of do some repairs actually before, and, and then I kind of realized I wasn't filming. So why don't I go ahead and, and kind of catch you guys up on the diagnosis so far and, and a couple of the, the repair steps that I've done so far, and we'll just kind of get you guys up to speed on it. So anyway, let's take a look. This was uh, the output of my scan tool when I first ran it when I was, this is here, um, this right here is where the car is idling. You can see that the, this is short-term fuel trim. This is long-term fuel trim. This is bank one oxygen sensor one and bank one sensor two. So this is before the catalytic converter and this is after. And before the catalytic converter, this is what you wanna see. You wanna see it going from rich, which is up here at 0.8 volts down to lean, uh, 0.2 volts. And, and it oscillates a couple times every second. Um, after the catalytic converter, you should see a straight line straight across um, if the catalytic converter is doing its job. If, Sensor two, after the cat, looks like sensor one, the cat's totally dead. So right here, I know that the cat is still working. So what I proceeded to do was I tried to do a propane enrichment test. And a propane enrichment test is where you actually take some propane from, you know, a little bottle here, and you introduce it into the intake, you know, unlit, obviously. What you're doing is you're adding fuel to the system. And what should happen is, the short-term sensor should go way rich. It should go to 0.8 volts and it should stay there as long as you're adding propane. And after you take the propane away, it'll stay there for a couple more seconds and then it'll drop to way lean. And the amount of time that it stays rich after you take the propane away is the amount of oxygen that was still stored in the catalytic converter and still so that the converter was still able to burn the hydrocarbons that, that are entering it. And if it drops down to lean right away after you take the, uh, the propane away, you know your cat's kind of on its way out. Anyway, that was the test that I tried to uh, perform and you know what I will put a little link down here in the bottom of, um, right here on the on the screen just to like a, a better video that explains that test in more detail just in case you kind of didn't understand my explanation there because I know I went through it really quickly but suffice it to say that's the test that I went through and I'm going to show you here by advancing the frames what happened I did kind of a little one right here you see it went kind of uh, it, you know the fuel trim went rich right here but you see the um, oxygen sensor still continued to go up and down and up and down, which was kind of, you know, weird. But, you know, I, I did a little test. I took it away. It went slightly lean and, and, and then it, um, what's, well, yeah, it went slightly lean and then it kind of came back a little. And then I, I just kind of opened the propane a little more. And you can see that it started to eventually go way rich. And that's when I was doing a big, you know, um, propane enrichment test. I was putting a lot of propane into the intake at that point. But you can see that the bank one oxygen sensor still went up and down and it was not supposed to do this. It was supposed to stay pegged rich. So that's not good. That's a problem right there. You can see we kind of went through it. And then when I took the propane away, this is where I took it away and it went way lean. So, and you can obviously see the fuel trim started to lean out. So that obviously is, is not what I should be seeing during a propane enrichment test. When you're adding propane, you should see the oxygen sensor peg way rich and it should stay a solid rich all the way. It shouldn't go back to lean again. It shouldn't continue oscillating. So that right there was, was definitely very weird. And my next step at this point was to maybe let's, you know, I wanted to see if I could switch the two oxygen sensors, the post cat and the pre cat oxygen sensor. I just want to switch them around because they're both the same. And, you know, if I could switch them around, I wanted to see if I would get the same results because my thinking is, you know, maybe the pre-cat oxygen sensor is kind of going bad. Maybe it's not working right. So I, that was my next step. Let's just make a little room for ourselves here. I've, I've obviously already kind of removed all these bolts. These things are, this, everything's just sort of staged right here. So what I wanted to do first was take off uh, the upper um, air cover and snorkel that goes over to the air tube over here so you you loosen up this uh, Phillips head right here and that just kind of comes off. Over here, you gotta take off this connector for the mass airflow sensor. You just gotta pull this little pin up and out and that'll pop out. 
And there's also, um, I think this is an air intake air temperature sensor right here. You just pu push this little clip right here and that'll pop out. And then this is sort of clipped into a little metal bracket right here. If you just stick a flathead screwdriver down in there and just kind of bend a little bit, pry a little bit back this way, this will just come up and pop off, okay? There are six bolts holding this on. There are only four in this car, so remove those. This kind of comes out and set that aside. We'll remove our air filter. Now, this is held on with one bolt here and two back here, and then two more right here. So take all those off. This thing comes out, get that out of the way. So now we got lots of room to see what's going on here. Now, the pre-cat oxygen sensor is normally right here. Obviously, this one's not here. I will get to why that is later. Um, but uh, one thing I proceeded to do, I, what I tried to do is I tried to remove that sensor, actually. I, well, first I removed the bottom one. That one came out easy. It's actually below the catalytic converter right here. So you got to get to it from underneath the car. So I was able to remove that one just fine. But when it came to removing this one, could not get it out for the life of me. And I'm, I'm telling you, I tried everything. So what I ended up actually doing was destroying it in the process, but I'll get to that. Anyway, um, because uh, in order to kind of get a good grip on that, I needed to remove the heat shield right here. And there are four bolts. There's one, two, and then three and four. So you just kind of remove those bolts, remove the uh, oil dipstick too, and just kind of pull this out. Okay, so this is just uh, an exhaust shield. So that came out and it was at this point when I kind of started to examine things that I believe I found the, the problem. Here's a close up shot of the exhaust manifold and right here, there's actually a crack. Crack in the exhaust manifold. So right there, that's how oxygen is getting in and hitting the oxygen sensor and causing the readings that I was seeing. So obviously need to get this thing out at this point. So to remove the exhaust manifold, there are nine bolts, basically. They're, well, they're nuts, actually. They're, um, there's one here, 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 and then back behind, back behind up here. And so that's what's holding it to the cylinder head. Down here, there are five bolts that are holding it to the catalytic converter. There are three that are visible. There's actually one behind here. And you get to the other two through here. This is a little passage that they left you so you can get a socket with a long extension down in there. So down here and here, you remove those five and the exhaust manifold will come right off. Boom. So that comes right out. Okay, so I've got it on the bench here, and let's zoom in on that crack. You can see, it's pretty nasty. Going all along right here, right? But let's flip this thing over. Let's take a look here. You can see that there's another crack on the other side, right along there, and there's also one right here and a little one right here too. So this thing is junk. So it is junk, but I still wanted the oxygen sensor back if I could get it. And obviously I couldn't, obviously I had to destroy it. I'm in the process of trying to get it out. Um, I was not able to get it with either of my oxygen sensor uh, tools. And uh, I, I, I tried a very long breaker bar and using the, uh, the handle of my jack to try to get more leverage and it just wouldn't budge for no man. Um, so at that point, just because, you know, this thing was already junk, I just wanted to see what would happen. I cut it off with my wire wheel so that I could get just a, a 6.78 socket on it. And that just ended up chewing up the metal, what little metal was left around it. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not coming out ever, at least not for me. I probably could have tried uh, heating it up with a torch, with an oxyacetylene torch, but honestly, I don't have one of those. Um, my buddy does, but I just, this was junk anyway, and I didn't want to go over to his house to grab it, so whatever. Um, so we need, I need to order a new one at this point, and so that's where, where I will pick up this video. Okay, new parts are finally here, yay. That's what it looks like. Looks good. Um, it came with this kind of 
tin foily uh, heat shield, which is already kind of dented in in a couple of places here and here. I'm not going to use this. Screw that. The old one is actually made out of metal, steel, I think, or uh, who knows? Who cares, right? Anyway, seems a little more sturdy to me, so I'll use that. So the new manifold came with five new studs and nuts, and they're obviously for this area right here. And that got me wondering, you know, why that was. And so I compared these two, and it looks like the old one is quite a bit thinner than the new one is. So it looks like we're gonna have to pull the old studs out of the catalytic converter and pop these new ones in. So what I'm gonna do to get the studs off, I don't have a stud extractor, so instead I'm gonna use the two nut method which is where you tighten two nuts together and then you use the bottom one to extract the stud. Um, the nuts that came with the manifold are these type. They're serrated on the bottom. So I'm not really sure if these can be used for that, if, they, if, if it's gonna be easy to get them off again if I tighten uh, two of these together, you know, two of, the, two of the serrated sides together. I don't know. I don't know what that's gonna do to the serrations and I wanna save that. So I just have these nuts. This is in my collection. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna use that. I'll show you what that looks like one time. So these are, these are coming out relatively easily using this method. Um, I, you know, as I'm feeling on this right here, I think this is just attached to the engine with a little bracket down there. And it seems pretty flimsy. I don't know if I would wanna be cranking on this with, uh, with just the wrench, if I were you, if, if I didn't have an impact ratchet. So what I might do in that case is just remove the catalytic converter from the engine. There are three bolts on the bottom that you can just remove. And then, you know, you can just kind of take it to your bench vise and work on it there. That, that might be just a little easier, a little bit of a better policy. So what I am doing is I'm just using one of my wrenches now to hold the bottom nut. And then I'm tightening the top nut. Oh, this one's gonna be difficult. Eh. Cause you wanna tighten them together. Now that looks pretty good. So now I'm switching to reverse. And now that they're, now that they're lined up together like that last one, I can slip over both of them and hopefully Get the stud out. Yay, look at that. Stud is out. One of these things is not like the other. Dorman is now on my you know what list. And that's what the old ones look like. You can see that the threads, there are fewer threads starting from the base where it screws in. It's only a couple though, only a couple really. So, I don't know, probably just gonna reuse one of the old ones, who cares? So I will put a little bit of anti-seize on these before I put them in. Just be a nice guy. So these do not wanna go in without a fight, which, doesn't make me happy. Same trick to install. I'm gonna get them tight, but to install it, I will be tightening on the top one. All I needed to do is hold that. There, so now they're tight. It's tight. <laughs> Slip my wrench on there. That got the top one off and there's the bottom one. So a lot, lot easier to actually install it than to remove it. And I'll just proceed to do that for the rest of them. So I'll just put some anti-seize on those. Got them all tightened down. It's probably not needed for me. I'm in California. I mean, these things came off really easily. So it, it didn't seem to be a problem, but for you, I'm almost certain it will be a problem. So I am reusing the old gasket. I already checked it out, pulled it off. I cleaned off the, uh, the exhaust, this surface right here, not the one going against the engine. 
clean that off just a little bit and it seems fine to me. I don't know why replace it really, unless it's, unless it's a problem. I mean, this thing is really so easy to get on and off. If it is a problem, then I'll just uh, change it. But I'm confident enough that I really don't need to. I think these nuts need to draw up the, the catalytic converter. I think it's just kind of hanging down a little bit right now. All right. Yeah, that looks good to me. That's, that has enough bite. Let's get these tightened up. So I just uh, I got the nuts staged here and I just kind of did a little reach around action and got them started a couple threads on the back there. So let's tighten them up. Got my brand new oxygen sensor right here. And I am totally, totally putting anti-seize on the threads. Because we know what happened last time. Let's thread this guy in. Make extra sure we don't cross thread it. There we go. Okay. This is a 22 or a 7 eighths, same thing. These don't have to be crazy tight. The last one was, oh my God, I don't know what idiot did that, but it just has to not leak. That's it. I mean, it doesn't have to, you don't have to do it with all your might. It's not going to freaking fall out. Oh, son of a bitch. I forgot my gasket. Oh God. Well, I guess what I get to do now. All right, well, I just took the manifold back off and put that gasket on and put everything back together. That was a lot of fun. Before you connect your oxygen sensor, you want to slip it through the little hole in your heat shield and put your heat shield back on. Otherwise you can't get it on. Get all your heat shield bolts started before you tighten them down. Whatever happens, you drop some tools, whatever. Don't get frustrated. First take a breath and then scream. Now, plug in our oxygen sensor. There we go, okay. So that was the little click. And by the way, to get that off, you, you would press basically up on the back, on the bottom, there's just a little tab. So you just had to sort of press up from underneath. I don't know if I mentioned that when I was taking things apart. A little difficult to do, but not, not very. I was able to get my finger in there. I'm able to kind of touch on it with my middle finger. And then I use like a pair of pliers to pull the actual harness out. So not that bad. So look at uh, bank one, sensor one. It's reading 1.1 volts. So something's wrong with that oxygen sensor. But on the bright side, the engine sounds like it's uh, idling a lot better than it used to. So. I'm hoping this is a fix, but obviously something's wrong with the oxygen sensor, so I gotta take a look at that. Uh, so it looks like the guy I bought this oxygen sensor from on eBay sold me a three wire sensor when this is supposed to be a four wire sensor. So, okay, I gotta go and just get one locally, no big deal. Um, anyway, I'll go do that, go put it in, see if we can confirm this repair. All right, I called around to a couple of my local stores and they want like 60, 70 bucks for an oxygen sensor. And I'm like, screw that. I have an old BMW one, which I think I got from a junkyard somewhere. 
And the only difference really is that it just has a different connector. You know, a four wire oxygen sensor is a four wire oxygen sensor. So I cut the, uh, I still, I saved the harness that I cut off that old oxygen sensor in the, uh, in the cracked manifold that I couldn't get out. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just splice this connector onto this oxygen sensor and you know, just use some butt splices for now. These are heat shrink too, so ooh, cool. And I'll just, you know, splice them together and I'm sure that'll work. You just match your colors. Um, the two white wires, it doesn't matter if you cross those. It's just a heater circuit. Okay, there, got them all spliced together and they're all good. I think I'll just take a little lighter and just kinda, well, maybe we can use the propane torch lightly. <laughs> just kinda melt the little heat shrink down. Let's see if we can set that up. Probably a little hotter than it needed to be, but I was too lazy to go find a lighter. Ah, uh, well, whatever works. So look at this, I was wrong. It is a four wire sensor, but this pin right here, this pin is pulling out and, and it won't actually like stay locked in. So, oh well, piece of crap, because China. Okay guys, I've been uh, attempting to confirm my repair here. So I've just got the engine warmed up and idling. As you see, everything looks good. This is what you should be seeing with a good working cat. This is the oxygen sensor before the cat, oh, going up and down as normal. Here's the one after the cat, straight line, straight across. That looks normal. Look what happens when I rev the engine. You see that the downstream oxygen sensor starts to go up and down, up and down. And now that right there is what's causing the P0422 code, the catalyst inefficiency code. That has been the problem all along. It wasn't the exhaust manifold, wasn't any leaks in the exhaust manifold, wasn't the, the exhaust manifold gaskets, none of that. It basically is a cat that is on the verge of dying. It, the cat seems to be working when the engine's idling, but it does not work when the engine's revving. I don't know if that's because the temperature's increased or if that's because the exhaust uh, flow increases, probably because the exhaust flow increases, but that's definitely what's wrong. And you know what? Um, I think I probably know what was wrong with my, uh, my propane enrichment test at the beginning of this video. Uh, I think what it was, I think what it was is this tip that I have for my propane torch is not big enough. I don't think that it lets out enough oxygen or enough propane. And also I went back and reviewed uh, Scanner Danner's video where he, he performs this test and I realized that he revs his engine when he um, introduces propane so that the engine doesn't die. And given the fact that I was opening up my propane all the way and my engine never died, that's also how I know it wasn't delivering enough propane. So I'll tell you what, I have this. This is off my, uh, my camping stove, right? This just goes into the side of the stove. This normally has a Schrader valve in it, but I removed the Schrader valve with a valve core tool. And so this has a little valve on it and I can open up uh, as much propane as I want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick this into the intake right here and I'm gonna rev the engine and open up the propane. We'll see if we can perform a propane enrichment test, an oxygen storage test, same thing. So I'm gonna rev the engine, open up the propane. You can see it went all the way rich. And now we've got straight across, rich. I'm gonna shut off the propane. You can see it dropped immediately. There we go. That's an actual valid oxygen storage test. I'm gonna stop this. What you need to be here, let me, let me actually stop the engine as well so you can hear me better. So what we're looking at here is, you need to pay attention to the frame numbers here. What I wanted to see was, right here is where I removed the propane. 
Okay, so immediately it dropped lean because you know the fuel trim was very, very negative, so that's why it dropped lean. But if the cat was good, it would have actually stayed rich for a couple seconds longer before it dropped lean. That's how much oxygen was still stored in there and it, and it just needed to burn that oxygen off before it dropped lean again as well. So the fact that this dropped, that the downstream sensor dropped lean almost immediately when the upstream sensor dropped lean, that means this cat is basically dead. So yeah, that's my fault that I performed the oxygen storage test incorrectly. Uh, again, I, you guys know I'm committed to leaving my mistakes in these videos so that you can learn from them. So now I'm actually performing the test correctly. Now you see how to perform it correctly. Uh, and now I can see clearly that the cat is basically dead. It's on the verge of, of being dead, obviously, but since it, it really has no oxygen storage, it's pretty much dead. Now I feel uh, confident about actually, you know, replacing it. Um, I ended up changing an intake manifold. I, I mean, I found problem. I found a cracked intake or I found a cracked exhaust manifold and uh, ended up changing that. Maybe it didn't need to be changed and, uh, and, and, you know, we spent unnecessary money changing it, but then again, it was cracked and, uh, you know, that uh, replacing it wasn't a bad idea. I mean, it is cracked. It, it still could have been causing exhaust leaks. Who knows? Uh, but you know, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the actual problem. It wasn't what was causing the 422. So, Hey, you know, again, you live and learn, you live from, you learn from your mistakes. That's why you make them. So, so obviously I needed to order a new catalytic converter, which I did. It took about three weeks to arrive. When it got here, I decided not to film the, the, uh, the install process because it's exactly the same job as you guys have already seen. With the exception of one added step, you just remove three nuts um, from underneath the catalytic converter. You just go underneath the car and remove them and that's it. The cat comes out and you know, the exhaust manifold goes back in. It's the exact same thing. Um, you change the studs over in the exact same way. So there was no need to film that. So I just installed it and went, went out driving to see if the cat would set. And it didn't, I couldn't get it set over and over again. I, I kind of, I, I went and changed um, a couple of the exhaust uh, of the catalytic converter gaskets uh, because I used the ones that actually came with the catalytic converter and turns out they were junk. One of them kind of burned half like crumbled away once it, it, it once it, it had a couple of heat cycles. So um, if you're buying an Eastern manufacturing or East, I think it's Eastern catalytic catalytic converter, uh, don't use the gaskets that they send you. But uh, you know, I ended up, uh, I think I, I also changed one other gasket. It might've been the one after the, the um, catalytic converter, but uh, none of that did the trick. And then I finally discovered that the exhaust manifold where the, uh, where the pre-cat oxygen sensor screws in actually was cracked. The threads there somehow got cracked. I, I must have tightened the new, catalyt the new oxygen sensor too much, although I don't think I did. Uh, but anyway, it was cracked. Oxygen was getting in, definitely screwing up that sensor and definitely preventing the uh, catalytic converter monitor from setting. So I contacted the eBay seller who I bought that part from. I think it was a doorman that I bought a dormant part. Anyway, they ended up sending me a replacement part. It took another three or four weeks. I mean, the car went back to the owner and the whole time. So it's been almost two months, I guess, since, uh, since I was last working on this job. But anyway, I got that new exhaust manifold in, installed it, took it out driving the, and the catalytic converter monitor set. It's now good. The car's registered, everything's solved. Uh, but I wanted to just show you, I wanted to kind of finish this video off by showing you uh, what a good, cat, um, a good oxygen storage test is going to look like. So we're just going to perform the exact same test that we did before properly and, uh, and, you, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's take a look. Okay, we're going to go ahead and perform another oxygen storage test. I'm going to rev the engine and then turn the propane on. You see it drop down negative. The fuel trim dropped very negative. I don't have quite enough propane going in yet. So there, now it's rich. Hold on. It's a matter of getting enough propane going. There we go, now we got enough propane. You see how both oxygen sensors went rich? So now I'm gonna turn off the propane. Okay, and 
as you saw here basically just after frame 90 i i turned off the propane and it went uh lean almost immediately but the uh, post oxygen sensor actually took another second in order to drop lean and this could vary you know it could it could take two seconds and again these are frames these aren't seconds that you're seeing on this chart so um, i can't tell you exactly how many seconds of extra oxygen this catalytic converter has but it has enough uh, such that it can actually store oxygen and it's actually working so as long as you don't see that these two things match you can be reasonably sure that your cats are working properly and that this test is valid but uh, as you can see it's not like it was before they, they you know the post sensor didn't respond exactly the, the way that the pre sensor did instead it actually uh, it, it, it had a little bit extra oxygen that was burning before it actually dropped lean again and started passing the oxygen through so that's what a valid propane storage test test looks like and this uh, this vehicle actually is fixed as you can see all of the uh, all of the the engine monitors have actually completed the catalyst converter monitor has completed so this car is fixed that's why it passed its smog check and uh, it's all good now so as it turns out, I performed the oxygen storage test incorrectly originally, which led me down the wrong path. I ended up replacing the exhaust manifold because I saw damage to it. When it turns out that wasn't the, the real problem, it was the catalytic converter that needed to be replaced. Even though it didn't look like it, it looked like it was working at idle, but at speed, it wasn't actually working properly. And uh, if, if I had performed an oxygen storage cr test correctly, I would have noticed that it wasn't good anymore. So. Yeah, you know, you live and learn. I, like I said, I'm committed to not hiding my mistakes on this channel such that you can learn from them. So you live and learn, right? Anyway, uh, I'm glad we can finally put this one to bed. Um, thanks a lot for watching.